Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening, everyone. First tonight, Tasmanians will be heading to the polls on May 1st following a shock early election announcement. We begin our extensive coverage this evening with state political reporter Sean McComish at Government House, reporter John Hunt at Parliament and Letitia Wallace in Launceston. So first, let's go live to Sean in Hobart. Good evening to you, Sean. Now, just how unexpected was this decision? Well, good evening, Kim. Well, to put it lightly, this decision is nothing short of stunning from the Premier. Months ago, he insisted that his government would go to full term in March of 2022. But this morning, he drove into Government House behind me to inform the Governor of his decision to go to the polls in just five weeks' time. He says it's all because of one person, Sue Hickey. Rolling into Government House this morning, the Premier pulled the election trigger as rumours reached boiling point. This morning I called on the Governor and requested that an election be held for the House of Assembly on the 1st of May. That was despite saying this in January. My intention is to uh, run to uh, full term March of uh, 2022. So what's changed? I did this because Tasmania can't afford the uncertainty of minority government. A minority government created when he dumped rogue MP Sue Hickey on Sunday. It's the Speaker that decided to quit the Liberal Party uh, and to put the government into minority. A claim slapped down by Ms Hickey. Well, I find it very cynical. Only yesterday he received a letter from me and one went to the Governor saying that I was continuing with my guarantee of confidence and supply. She's now running as an independent. The Premier is ruling out returning with a minority if the numbers don't go his way. I will give um, a very clear commitment that I will govern in majority or not at all. The May 1 date will also coincide with three separate upper house elections. Rebecca White is preparing to battle on TAFE and health. Peter Gutwin has manufactured a crisis of instability in his own government to call an early election. The Labor leader is due to give birth in June. I'm no different to any other woman who's worked while she's pregnant. As far as I'm concerned, um, this is a brilliant time for us to go to an election. A race is now on to pick candidates. Former Launceston Mayor Janie Finlay has put up her hand for Labor, while the Greens have already selected several election hopefuls. Cassie O'Connor believes votes can be clawed back after the party lost a seat in 2018. So we'll be campaigning on our record and I genuinely believe uh, this time around it's going to be different. The Premier says all sitting government MPs will be recontesting. It's unclear who the Liberals' other candidates could be, but it could be looking to woo over one key independent. I've had a number of uh, positive discussions with Madeleine Ogilvie. Who pays for the campaigns will also be a sticking point. The government is yet to implement political donation reforms, so the Premier has made this pledge. The Liberal Party has agreed to voluntarily disclose within two business days all donations received for the state campaign exceeding $5,000. Day one down, now five long weeks to go. Sean McComish, 7 Tasmania News. Continuing our coverage and John Hunt joins us from Parliament House. John, how unprecedented is this move? Well, Kim, governments in this state have traditionally gone full term, with the last midterm poll called in 1998. Recently released figures show the Premier is in a good position heading into the May 1st election. An EMRS poll from February showed the Liberals' primary vote sitting on a remarkable 52%, while Labour languished at 27%. On the question of preferred Premier, Peter Gutwin recorded a clear win over Rebecca White. Now, that's a huge turnaround from 12 months ago, which saw her lead. Now, we spoke to a number of political analysts and commentators today who say the Liberals will be hard to beat. When Will Hodgman secured his second term as Tasmanian Premier in 2018, his message was clear. Tonight they have voted for no change to stick to the direction this state is heading in. But things didn't go to plan. He was gone less than two years later. In stepped Peter Gutwin. Our plan has worked and I see no need for radical divergence. But just months into the top job, the coronavirus pandemic hit. His handling of the crisis rewarded. The Premier has had uh, record popularity levels. Experts today left dissecting the reasons behind going to an election, almost a year ahead of schedule. 
can only be early for two reasons. Both of them are cynical. You're calling it early to take advantage of a situation which is as good as it's going to get. And the other is there are skeletons in the closet. Analysts say the Premier begins as the clear favourite in the race. The government's polling over 50%, so that at the moment seems to be a very strong position. Those governments that have managed COVID have been actually rewarded for their strength and for their resilience during the COVID crisis. The midterm leadership switch also predicted to help the Liberals. Now they've had a couple of leaders and those have changed so the public's perception of it is slightly different. And the polling date's timing with legislative council elections could boost its upper house numbers, helping with passing key legislation like the controversial anti-protest laws. They may be quite keen to uh, see if they can jag a couple of uh, upper house seats at the, at the same time. Unions warning, however, the government cannot rely purely on its COVID-19 management, saying voters have a long memory. They haven't forgotten about health, about housing, about education, particularly in the context of TAFE, and overall jobs. As for the opposition, it's facing a big challenge in the bid to return to power. Complete underdogs. <laughs> they, have to make the, they have to make the best of a very difficult situation. I think it's been hard looking across the country um, at oppositions, no matter what colour they are. Others say recent controversies surrounding the treatment of women in politics may give Labour an opportunity. They do have a female leader at a time when the Liberal Party itself is on the back foot in the way it treats women. Now it's all up to the voters. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. Okay, well now to explain the polling process and we're joined by reporter Letitia Wallace. Letitia, what does the election countdown look like? Kim, as we know, polling day is May 1. Tasmanians have until 6pm on Tuesday to enrol or update their details. Nominations for candidates close on Wednesday, April 7. The state election will coincide with Legislative Council elections for Windermere, Mersey and Derwent. I spoke to Tasmania Electoral Commissioner Andrew Hawkey this afternoon, who says this has never happened before. To the best of my knowledge, this is the first time that a state election and a Legislative Council periodic elections have shared the same polling day, so it'll be a new ground breaking for all of us in that sense. We could have up to 82,000 electors who are required to vote both at the Legislative Council elections and the state. Uh, in the polling places that we've already providing for the Legislative Council, they'll be able to complete two processes. The Electoral Commission says COVID safe arrangements will be made with polling locations expanded to ensure appropriate distancing. As for pre-polling, Tasmanians will be able to cast their vote from Monday, April 12. So candidates have just over a fortnight to win over voters. No doubt a very busy few weeks ahead for everyone involved. Kim? Certainly will be. Thank you very much, the Letitia Wallace. Well, now, as we said earlier, we're going to cross to the Premier, Peter Gutwin. He joins us now from Launceston. Premier, thanks for your time this evening. Now, first... Good evening. How are you? Good evening. Very well. Thank you, Premier. Now, firstly, is this an election called in the interest of all Tasmanians or in the interests of the Liberal Party? Uh, this is an election that um, will deliver certainty and will secure Tasmania's future, um, Kim. Now, I've called this because uh, we're in a good place. We've come through the coronavirus challenge. Importantly, our economy is growing strongly. Jobs are coming back, but uh, we need to keep taking the next steps and, importantly, secure Tasmania's future as we rebuild out of this. Mm. You mentioned their business. Now, you're effectively in caretaker mode now. When elections are called, traditionally, business stalls, decision-making needs to stall. How is calling this election beneficial to business who are trying to recover from the pandemic? Well, one of the challenges with most elections is that there's speculation for months. Um, we're going to an election today and uh, by the 1st of May uh, the election will be concluded. And importantly, business confidence has come back. It's high now and it's important that by delivering certainty in terms of a majority government uh, that that confidence will remain, will continue to attract investment, importantly our economy will grow and will continue to create jobs. You've mentioned repeatedly today majority government. Now, why do you think that you've got more chance of getting majority government now or on May 1st than perhaps later in the year or going the full term? Well, one of the things that occurred this week is that we were plunged back into minority government. 
Now we know if you look back at the last minority government, uh, the economy went into recession. Uh, we lost 10,000 jobs at the peak. We've come out of coronavirus with a strong economy. Uh, jobs have returned to pre-pandemic levels. Now it's important that we keep confidence high, that we provide certainty, and importantly, that we get on with our very clear plan to secure Tasmania's future. And just finally, Premier, that you have mentioned that you called it called an election, taking into account that Labor leader Rebecca Weish is pregnant and due to give birth. Now, did you have a conversation with Rebecca Weish about that campaign process and what might suit her? Oh, look, no, I didn't have a conversation with her, um, but I did consider this um, and give deep thought to it. Uh, importantly, I think um, Ms White herself today has said that she's very comfortable with the timing of the election. Thank you very much. Premier Peter Gutwin, thank you for your time this evening. Kim, thanks very much. Well, let's turn to other news now. And the state government says 16,500 doses have been administered in Tasmania since the COVID vaccine rollout began five weeks ago. Community clinics have opened today in Mowbray and Brighton, with another to begin in New Norfolk on Sunday. The Kingston Clinic saw significant demand, delivering 1,137 vaccinations over three days this week. If you're unable to get a booking, please be patient. We know that this cohort is very large. We have around 180,000 Tasmanians, and it's going to take us several months to be able to get through everybody. The government says vaccine supplies are growing, with more than 24,000 doses available over the next three weeks. Tasmanians are also being reminded to download the Check in Tas app before May 1st, with 235,000 people already signing up. The finishing touches have been made today to the Basinish Concerts Invermay Park site, with its opening this afternoon. The decision to move the event came at a six-figure cost, but it has been given the tick of approval by performers. One final rehearsal for tonight's Basinish concert headliner, Ballpark Music. They've been wowed by the organisers' mammoth effort to shift the festival in just two weeks. To be able to sort of repurpose the festival and still be able to go ahead and even sell more tickets is just amazing to get it done that quickly. I don't think people realise how much costs are involved to actually do something like this. We spent over $100,000 in this site move alone. Three and a half thousand punters will be here tonight to enjoy ballpark music and some other Invermay Park music. Organisers have been forced to be creative to maximise attendance. Festival planning involves a little bit more work in 2021. It's put us through the ringer, but you know we can safely say that this is going to be a great event. There's plenty of spaces in the zone in the zones, I should say. One, two, three and four, people will be able to dance in front of their chairs. The festival opened by local psych pop artist Carl Renshaw. He hadn't played since before the pandemic. I think it's going to be great. Yeah, Vibes Down do such, a, such an awesome job of, of running festivals and are always so awesome to, to kind of do stuff with. This morning saw the finishing touches put on the site. This afternoon saw the first people stream through the gate. I'm so excited to see Holy Holy tonight. Been a big fan for a long time. Space <laughs> Jane, Probably Spacey Jane today, uh, Spot of Eight tomorrow, I reckon. I'll be um, having a beer in the unofficial VIP deck um, and yeah, just enjoying it. Eyes soon turning to next year. Yeah, we're fully going back to the basin next year if we can um, and I'm sure we'll be able to. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. Extinction Rebellion protesters are ramping up their climate emergency fight. The group marched to the Premier's office in Launceston this morning, dumping dozens of bags of wood chips outside before chaining themselves up. But the protest was soon interrupted by a passerby. Jesus is in control of the climate, so why are you worried about it? <laughs> you just don't know Jesus, do you? I do. With an election approaching, the activists had this message. We will be out pushing the climate change message and we don't care who gets in as long as they act on it. The group wants to see an end to forest logging and for Australia to reach zero net emissions by 2025. Students from Launceston Church Grammar School are preparing for their annual 24-hour walkathon. Year 12s from the school are supporting the Cancer Council with their fundraising efforts this year. 
As an organisation that needs to raise a lot of money every year, it's just wonderful that young people are out there supporting Cancer Council Tasmania. You know, every Tasmanian has a cancer story and I'm sure if I asked these wonderful young people at Grammar their story, they would have one to tell me as well. I think sugar will get us through it, but um, yeah, it's just going to be a big effort from the grade and just step by step, I guess. The students are expected to take 24 hours to finish the 80 kilometre walk. A trio of Tasmanian cyclists have fallen agonisingly short of gold medals on day two of the National Track Championships in Brisbane. But in one of the hard-fought finals, spectators were treated to a thrilling photo finish. A frantic finish between Australian track cycling's elite. Tasmania up around the outside, it's going to be close. Just how close? Centimetres, the difference between second and third. That was close though, wasn't it? Team South Australia edging out Tasmanian duo Dalton Stretton and Hamish McKenzie for top honours in the men's under-19 Madison final. But there was a silver lining. Just in the last sprint, stole the silver medal from the Victorians. It was a great ride. Another local posing on the podium at the national championships, Lauren Perry. Perry, following fusion. About to give the bronze medal to Lauren Perry, but she got the silver. She's got to go down to the other end. They've swapped around. <laughs> she was awarded a silver medal in the individual pursuit. After blitzing the field with the fastest qualifying time, she failed to close a three-second gap between Victorian Samantha Deriter in the final. To soccer, and the coach of the Devonport Strikers says his side was rusty in the first game of its NPL title defence, clinching chances in front of goal, the focus this weekend against South Hobart. You never take South lightly, they're a, they're a very well drilled um, opponent, um, very organised. Meanwhile, women's Super League newcomers Launceston City and Devonport will face off. There's new players in, in both teams and you never really know what's going to happen on a Saturday. And rowers Georgia Nesbitt and Connor Ryan have both sealed gold medals at the national championships in Lake Barrington. Good evening. Hobart and Denali had 23 to be the warmest spots around the state today. Launceston 21, Burnie 20 and Devonport 19 degrees. Temperatures close to average. St Helens 22, Smithton, Friendly Beaches and Bushy Park 21. Low Head in the Islands 20 and Strawn 19. Rain over the west overnight but today the top fall just 6 millimetres at Mount Reed. That cumulus cloud scattered across the state. A frontal band is just to our west with a cold unstable pool of air following. A narrow band of cloud extends from Western Australia to Victoria. Tomorrow, the cold front begins its trek over the state. A high pressure system extends over most of the North Island. Wind shifting west northwestly at around 15 to 25 knots, but to 30 knots early over the west, 10 to 15 knot breezes over the inland lakes. Strong wind warning for the waters in the south and west from southeast Cape to Sandy Cape. A moderate flood warning current for the South Esk River, minor flood warnings for the Macquarie and Lower Meander. Saturday in Hobart, a few showers and 20. 16 the top for Maydina, a few showers for Oatlands, 18 the high. Launceston, similar forecast, but showers clearing later in the day. 21 the top, 20 for Devonport. Liawini showers, 13 the maximum. Burnie 19 with showers easing. Showery for Strawn, 17. 17 also for Marawar. St Helens, 20 with a few showers clearing. A few showers for Swansea, 20 also for Orford. There's the UV sitting at a moderate 5 tomorrow. On Sunday, showers over the west, far south and Bass Strait Islands. Fine on Monday, apart from a light shower over the west and far south. And on Tuesday, fine and partly cloudy, just a possible shower over the west. Sunny and 28 in Perth, a morning shower for Adelaide. Showers in Melbourne, sunny and 27 degrees in Sydney. Fine and warm weather forecast for Brisbane. Cloudy conditions at the moment, it's 19 in Hobart, 16 in Launceston, 16 also in Devonport. Kim, I wish you a very happy weekend. What's the catch? Thanks Murph, you have a good weekend too.